It's me, Bree Reads! Hi friends, it's me, Bree. Today, let's read a classic folktale story together. If you'd like to make the mitten from the story with me, or a mitten of your very own, you can draw with me in another video. Today's story is shared from my friends at Vooks. Vooks is a streaming library of storybooks brought to life with animation, music and sound, and read-along text. And their new Storyteller tool lets you record your own narration and share your storytelling voice. Now, let's read! The Mitten It was a cold and windy winter morning. And the little boy hustled up the path, dragging his sled behind him. He was dressed for snowy adventures. From his knit cap, to his warm boots, to his two soft mittens, which hung from his sleeves on a piece of string so he wouldn't lose them. The boy headed to his favorite spot, a stupendous hill, perfect for sledding. He dashed through the trees, eager for his first long slide across the snow. But as he jumped over the stone wall at the top of the hill, one of his mittens caught on a low branch. The boy was going so fast, he barely felt the small tug of the mitten before the string gave way. He was out of sight and down the hill before his mitten even hit the snow. All was quiet. Then, tiny, shivering mouse darted out from the stone wall, saw the cozy mitten and crept right in. Soon, Bunny hopped along. The mitten caught his eye, and being a curious fellow, he jumped in right next to Mouse. Next, Fox wandered by. Oh, what a snug place this is, she thought when she discovered the mitten crawled inside. Mouse and Bunny moved over to make room. The wind blew through the treetops and swirled down the lane. Lynx padded out of the forest and saw the mitten. What's this? She thought. How charming! And she nuzzled the mitten open and squeezed herself in. All the animals cuddled together in a warm ball of fur. The wind was still for a moment. Then Wolf came loping up the hill. Up the other side trudged Bear. You first, said Bear. No, you, said Wolf. and they ended up jostling and cramming their way into the mitten together. Now, the mitten's knitting was strong and true, but even so, it was stretched to its limit. Poor Mouse was at the bottom of the pile. I need more room, he thought, and found a nice soft spot right on Bunny's belly. He wiggled his whiskers happily, which tickled Bunny's tummy. Bunny started to giggle and twitch, and his ears tickled Fox's chin. Fox snickered and shifted her tail, which brushed against Lynx's paws. Lynx chuckled and rolled onto her back. 
her fluffy tufted ears, making Wolf's muzzle twitch. Wolf howled with laughter. <laughs> and all that wiggling and shifting and giggling made Bear laugh too. <laughs> well, it was too much for the mitten to take. With a giant pop, out tumbled Bear. And Wolf. And Lynx. And Fox. And Bunny. And off they ran back to their homes, laughing themselves silly the whole way. It was the time of year when the sun set early, so it wasn't long before the boy made his way back up the hill. He was just about to step over the stone wall when a flash of red in the snow caught his eye. My mitten, he said, and picked it up. It was bigger than he remembered. Puzzled, he turned it over in his hands. Deep inside the mitten, something was moving. Suddenly, a wee head with velvety ears and quivering whiskers peeked out over the cuff. It was Mouse! Oh, cried the boy. Hello, little fellow. Have you found yourself a new home in my mitten? Mouse groomed his whiskers contentedly and crawled back down into his cozy new nest. Oh, I will take you home then, the boy said, and you may live in my mitten as long as you'd like and be my friend. The boy put on his mitten, cupped his hand gently around Mouse, and dragging his sled behind him, headed to his own warm home across the snow. today, friends, and thank you to my friends at Vux for sharing this animated story with us. You can find Vux here on YouTube. Please subscribe to their channel for more books and more fun. See you next time. Bye-bye!